Hey everyone, and welcome back. Um, so, it's been a while since I've done <clears throat> uh, any of the videos. I've been hellish busy, but busy doing... I'll start all that again, that was rubbish. Hi everyone, and welcome back. Uh, sorry it's been so long, I've been a bit busy doing some TV and a little bit of film work. So, I was flying a few weeks ago, doing some guiding and some teaching, and a few incidents happened all on the same day because the winds increased and someone got blew back. Well, a few got blew back and um, I was trying to help people on the radio, etc. And a few things went wrong. Uh, a few of the people were then, we were debriefing and talking about why those things went wrong. And a few of them were getting confused where their big ears were what lines to pull, they'd forgotten. Um, so I'm gonna go over that. So I'm gonna go and demo that up on the hill uh, today. Uh, a few people were forgetting when to use speed bar and at what altitude is safe and positions and why to use speed bar and timing when to use speed bar. And also a few were getting blown back, but they still had altitude to be able to turn and run behind what we had a barbed wire fence in the way. So they could have actually turned and run and gone behind the fence rather than trying to land in front of the fence and get blown back into the fence. So I'm sort of aiming this a little bit at what happened at our local site. But I'm sure if you're watching this somewhere around the world, uh, you can you can use this. You can think, oh well, I've got a I've got some obstacle behind our takeoff, whether it's trees, you know, vehicles, buildings, etc. So I'm hoping this will work for everybody. So I'm going to go over speed bar, big ears, and also putting myself into a position where I'm being blown backward, and when to call it and to break and to move behind the obstacle. Uh, and also, a few people have forgotten how the hill actually works. And I, was, I was about to say, believe it or not, but, you know, maybe you're, you, you, you also think this. Um, so I want to explain the way the hill works and the way the wind is being deflected up the hill, and that's what we're surfing on. If you go behind the hill off the back of the hill onto the flat bit, you can't stay up. The wind isn't being deflected upwards. So I'm probably gonna do a bit of work in here on one of my silly little um, DIY hills here, just to try and explain that a bit better. Or maybe I'll do it on the hill, I don't know. But I wanna explain that you can't stay up. If this is the hill, and this is the top of the hill, the flat where you top land. If you come over here on the top, you can't keep going up, unless there's thermals. But some people are thinking, oh, we can't go backwards to move to miss this obstacle because we'll just keep going higher and higher and behind the hill. It doesn't work like that. So I want to really try and work on explaining how that works. Because there's a couple of little drags and uh, a couple of people got scared and there was no need for it. So I'm going to re-go over all of those things. So I don't know what I'm going to call this video. I don't know. Safety or uh, how to stop an incident. or I, I don't know. But anyway, that's what this one's about. I hope you enjoy. Thanks once again for all the subscribing. I think we're over 4,000 subscribers now. I'm blown away. So thanks a lot. I'm going to grab my glider literally right now and I'm going up the hill. Cheers. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna start the video with explaining how we stay up on the hill and what will happen if we go slightly behind the hill. So if you look at the shape of the hill here, look. Look at the shape of the hill. And this is where we're going to launch from. So the wind is coming across the flatland and then being deflected upwards up the side of the hill. So I don't think you can see the paraglider that's soaring towards us. And one of my ex-students is about to take off behind us. But we're surfing the updraft of the wind. So this is what's keeping us airborne, okay? If we want to top land and we move behind the hill, it's impossible. It's impossible for us to stay up because the wind is being deflected upwards on the front. But on the top of the hill, it's going along horizontal. When we can't surf, we can't stay up in the horizontal wind. And I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a few students saying, well, I didn't want to go behind there because I didn't want to keep going up. 
but you can't. You can only go up on the front of the hill. If you just turn around and watch, watch uh, this pilot taking off. Okay, look, so he's off, almost. Here he goes again. So he's staying aloft with the wind that's rushing up the side of the hill. So basically it's like a wave, it's like a surfer. He's surfing the air that's been blown, being deflected up the hill. So that's what he's doing right now, look. The wind is being deflected up the hill and that's what's keeping him aloft. So now, if you imagine you come along, I'm going to demonstrate this in a minute, but if you imagine that you're flying along here at say 100, 200, 300 foot, and you want to top land, if you walk with me now, if we walk off the back of the side of, off, sorry, off the front of the hill to where we want to top land, which will be up here, look. This is flat. You can't stay up here. The wind is blowing across the ground. So you've got to come down. You will come down. Even if you're a thousand foot, all you've got to do here is just do left and right, up and down like this. If you're behind the slope, you will naturally come down. So a few students were saying to me, and ex-students were saying to me, oh, I forgot, I forgot the other day, and I was getting, I didn't want to go behind the hill too much to top land because I didn't want to keep going up. Well, you can't, you will come down. Yes, if there's thermals, you might hit thermals, but ridge soaring isn't on the flat. We're ridge soaring on the front. I know I keep going on and on and on. Sorry, but it's the only way I sort of, people sort of get it if I keep saying it. So if you're on the front of the hill, you're surfing, you're soaring. If you want to top land, you come back onto the flat and you will come down. So I'm now going to take off and just demonstrate that for a start. I'm going to come along high up here, high up, and I'll talk to you. I'll, I'll take the, uh, the microphones and I'll talk to you. Even though I'm high up, I'll be behind the hill and I'll just do little S turns and I'll come down and I'll land right here. So before we carry on to any other bits about being blown back, I'm gonna demonstrate that. Now, just one other thing I will add, coming behind the hill to top land is fine if it's a flat top hill, but if it's a spine back hill, so the wind is coming up this face and rolling down this face, then you shouldn't go behind. You should be going down the front to land where it's safe. If it's a spine back hill, don't be doing what I'm telling you where you come back onto the flat top of the hill. You're only doing this approach if it's a flat top landing area and where people do top land. If people, you won't see people landing on spine backs, you'll see professional pilots, but you won't see club pilots landing on these spine back hills. It's much, much more ad, um, advanced technique. And if you get it wrong and you get blown behind the spine, Life's not going to turn out too good. So I'm talking about proper top landing areas. So I'm going to rig up, take off, get some height, and I'm purposely going to come in high. So to show you how you lose height if you're not on the front of the hill. So let's do that. Another quick thing while I'm rigging, whenever you're rigging, this is nothing, well, I suppose it is to do with the video. I'm just going to add things in. <laughs> but whenever you're rigging, don't anyone talk to you and put you off. Because if you forget strapping in, or forget forget doing your leg strap up or something, life's not going to be good again. So whenever you're connecting up, if someone's talking to you, just sort of politely say, just hang on a sec while I just connect, you know. Things like that can really bite you in the ass. Anyway, let's do this. In fact, I'm going to be idle and do it from here. So I'm not really coming in particularly high. But anyway, here we are. Look, so I've drifted in and I'm on the flat part of the hill now. So I can't go up. To the side. And I'm going to break right. Do this all day long if you, if you need to, if you're that high. So here we go. Look, look, you can see where the hill is. And you can see where I am. I'm behind the hill, look on the flat. So this is looking good, I'm coming down nicely here. And I'm keeping looking at my landing approach, which is you on the camera, I wanna land by you. So that's looking quite good, I'm keep looking at my landing zone. I don't, don't wanna to go too much further back now. 
So I'm now going to sort of slightly turn towards the camera and feel it out. If I start to climb here, as I get to the front, I'll just do some more left and rights. This is looking perfect. So now, stand up. Stand up early. A little bit high, so look, I'm just going to do some small, really small inputs of my rights and left. Nothing sharp. Nothing sharp, just gentle. Want to land right by the camera. Small S turns. Until I'm down. Keep looking at your landing spot. That's looking good. Make sure you're directly into wind. Stand up, make sure your legs are alive and you're going to use them. Don't just sit down. And boom, like that. This is what I would do. I wouldn't force the bar on at this altitude to try and land here just because this is the landing zone. So here, there's a barbed wire fence, right? So I'm going to demonstrate what I would do here. Look, you're going backwards. I'm there, but I'm being blown backwards. This is what you should do. Look, so there's barbed wire fence. I don't want to hit that. If I try and land here and I get blown back, I'm going to hit the barbed wire. So look, I'm turning to wind. One more attempt, see if I'm going to be all right. No. I'm hovering, look, I'm hovering. I'm going to hit the barbed wire. Break left. Watch. Break left. Fly over the fence. Go the other side of the fence. Don't risk landing here and be blown into the barbed wire. Because there's nothing downwind of me now. And the same thing, look. I'm just going to do the little left and rights here. Just do the small left and rights. So now I can't hit the fence because I'm downwind of the fence. I'd rather have a walk than rip my wing or hurt myself. So look, here comes the landing. It's dead windy. Turn quick, hit it quick and run at it because it's very windy now. So look, I've got the brakes fully on. What you want to do here is take a step to the wing so the leading edge falls low and quickly grab the rear risers. Don't mess around, grab the rear risers. The wing will not go anywhere now I'm on the rear risers. So that's the way to land safely. If you're high up and you're being blown back, rather than try and force yourself on the front because that's where all the pilots land and you, you don't want to look a plonker, <laughs> you're better off braking, landing on the downwind side of the obstacle if you've got a lovely big flat top like this. So if you're ever in that situation where you're hovering or going backwards on any flying site, and it's a top landable site, I would advise rather than trying to force the glider, trying to force yourself to land where you normally would, just break slightly. Look, if you look, if you look where the pilot is over there, we haven't flown that far back, look. That's where I landed a minute ago. But because it's just got super windy, I've decided to keep it safe and land here. So I've got, yeah, I've got a hundred yard walk, whoopee. My glider's not ripped and I've got nothing to get dragged into. And there's a gate there. So just remember, if you're being blown back and wherever you're flying, it's safe enough to do so, just do that slight break, whether it's a right break or a left break, and just come slightly downwind of the obstacle. Hope that helps. Okay, so for the time it's taken me to land safely and come through the gate, what's that? One minute. Rather than force it here, look, straight into barbed wire, or whatever your obstacles might be at your flying site. So, there you go, there's one thing, brake. Don't just sit there thinking, uh-oh, look back, uh-oh, I'm gonna hit that tractor, or I'm gonna hit that whatever, that obstacle. If you see, before you get too low, if you see, see that you're going backwards, just make that break and get behind, get downwind of the obstacle. So the other thing I'm gonna show you now is big ears. So we'll go back to the front of the hill and I'll show you the big ears on, in the old days, it was always the front, the front A, outer A line, and it, and, it, and it still is nowadays really on, even on the higher wings, you, it's, it's a, it's a different, I, I won't confuse you, but on, on wings like this and some of the higher wings, it is a different line, but I'm not gonna confuse you because if I'm talking to you and you're a pilot that needs to know what I'm teaching you or, or advising, you'll be flying an A or a B wing anyway. So it will be the outer A line, uh, but I'll show you that before we take off and then we'll do some in the air. So let's show you big ears. Okay, so big ears, big ears on this wing are, well, forgetting what the wing is, your big ears is always the, the front A and it's the outer A. 
Okay, so on my wing, it's got a blue line, look, to show me. Oh, they're all red, but the one's got a bit of blue on it before it goes red. So it's to indicate that's my big ears. So what you want to do is you want to find out on your particular wing what your big ears are and keep it in your head. And every single time you take off, take off, get comfortable and have a quick look where your big ears are. Program it in your head. Tell yourself, right, I know where my ears are. Because when you start to panic, you start thinking, oh, was it, was it that one or was it this one? So just, I always, all the years I've been flying, I still take off and I'll always have a quick look where my Stabilo line is. I'll always have a quick look where my ears are. And I, I'm not just saying that for this video, I do. I seriously do, I always have a quick look. Oh yeah, I'm flying my Alpina today, so I know it's the blue. Or I'm flying my Coyote today, so I know it's the green. So I fly lots of different wings, so I always have to have a look. Just get au fait with what your big ears are. And whenever you take off, have a quick look before anything happens and you start to panic. So yeah, on my wing, it's, the, it's, the, it's got the bit of blue on and it's to pull that tip over like that, look. Like that, and that's your big ears. It's as simple as that. And what you can also do is when you pull them, you keep hold of the brakes. And when you pull, you should know all this actually, because if you're watching this and you've done the course, you've been taught this by your instructor. Um, but anyway, you pull your e you're holding the brakes, you never let them go, you pull your ears in and then you can weight shift to steer. So I'll demonstrate that now. Okay, so I've just pulled my big ears in here and now I'm actually listening to my Vario. And as soon as the Vario shows me I'm in even stronger sync, I'm going to lean right like I'm doing here. And I'm actually weight shifting with my ears in into the sinking air. So rather than just leave the ears in and come down at say 200 foot a minute, I'm leaning in the sinking air and I'm probably coming down at four, 500 foot a minute now. So you don't have to just pull the ears in and keep flying in a straight line. You can still find sinking air and lean in it and come down even quicker if you wish to do so. Okay, I've lost loads of altitude, so I've popped the ears back open now with a slight tug of the brakes, just to clear them. And now I'm just gonna feel the air out, make sure I'm not shooting back up. If all of a sudden it's thermic and I'm shooting back up, going to an altitude I don't want to go to, I'll just simply pull the ears straight back in and I'll hold them in a little bit longer. This all feels good, so now I'm slightly off the leading edge of the earl, and I'm going to start doing my left and right for my landing approach to land by you on camera. This is looking good and now I'm going to put another turn in. So, so I'm actually going to creep, creep forwards towards you slightly. And I'm just going to feel out the air now. Am I travelling forward? Is it blowing a gale? Has the wind picked up and I need to do that break and land downwind of the fence. Well, I don't. I can feel I don't. I can also see a student ground handling. So I know it's not windy. So here we go. I'm going to put another S turn in. And then back we come. Back we come. See? So I'm just slightly off the front of the hill. Nothing too steep, nothing too harsh when you're low down. You don't need big ears anymore at this altitude. And you definitely don't want speed power anymore at this altitude. This is all down to just flying on the controls now, on the brakes. So I'm just taking my time. It doesn't matter if I keep hitting little lumps and bumps and going up and down. Don't worry about it. Just relax. I'm going to go a little bit more of a downwind run. Go, And I'm looking at you. Land right at you. Here we go. One more turn. This should be a final turn. This is looking good. This is looking good. And now in towards you. Here we go, stand up, nice and early. And again, if you feel you're a tad high, I'm gonna do some small S turns, look. Small S's, nothing too steep, not too steep. Nothing too steep when you're this low. Nothing too steep. And then about, what, 20 foot up, you shouldn't be doing any turns now. You should be straight in for your landing. Here we go. <laughs> Typical gust of wind. Boing. Like that. And then again, I've shown you before, but in the higher winds, if you know the winds are gusting, make sure you do the whip and the hit. 
and the run. Just like that. Hope that helps, guys. See you later. Any questions, just whack them across.